This is my center section of the crank. The, uh, the wing, or whatever you want to call it, is not attached yet, but it is just tapped on until it's not able to move. Uh, the outside here is concentric, so it sits in this groove nice and easy. Now, this is called an edge finder over here. And what it does, it kicks off to the side just as it touches off. Now it's it's accurate till about one to two ten thousandths of an inch when that kicks over. So what I did here, this is our mill, and I got a DRO, a digital readout on the side. So what I did was I used this edge finder to find center of my journal that this is just rocking in. And I set it to zero. Uh, it's not zero, but I'll tell you that in a sec. Um, here's my pin. Um, this was the old pin. It's going to be close enough for what we're doing. Uh, half of that is 472 thou. Um, I can't do the 0.3 or 3 tenths of a thousandth of an inch. Um, this only does um, to the 0005 tenths or 5 thousandths of an inch. So my edge finder is 200 thou, divided by 2 is 100 thou, so I'll add 100 thou to this, and that will give me 572 touch off from center. Now, I found center here, and I set up a pin, and I clamped it down, and it's just about touching there. Now this is all free right now, but it will always sit in that journal because of the radius. Uh, I touched off, as you saw, at 608. So that's about 36 thou difference. So that's this way. Us. So what we got to do, now that I've established, well, I got lucky when I put this in, I only had to move it a thou to be on center with the bottom. Now, how do I find center at the top? Well, this is all dialed in, and so all I got to do is come over and touch off there. And it's the same diameter pin, and it's only moving up and down and laterally on my x-axis. So I can move this over here now, and I'll just move it over 36 thou. I'll set that to zero, and I need two hands to do this, unfortunately. Okay, we got the dial on the other side, and I had to move it 36 thou, um, which I did. And I went and touched off again, and 572 was my target. And I'd say that's pretty damn close. And we're allowed plus or minus half a degree, so. Now that I got this together with thread lock, it's a blue thread lock, the 243 by the way, and your tapered pin here. So we'll go and press this together and start looking at our other sections. Okay, we're here in the drill press and we got the first section assembled and I made this jig that fits around a bearing and it's machined flat. So what is happening is a little over about a third of the pin sticks beyond the bearing 
and we're going to use that as a stopper so it can't push the pin through to the other side. Now the gap in between the con rods or between the plates was 380 thou. And we got this in position. I got a stopper. So there's not a whole lot of room for it to rotate up front here. But uh, it's going to, it's bumped up against this pin. And the top section will bump up against that as well. So I'll be very close in dialing in after I press it in together. Now, just to make sure I don't push that pin through or do any kind of other damage on heating the plate up in the oven right now to 350 degrees. Now there's about two thou interference, uh, 0 0.002 of an inch, which is about half the width of a hair which is an incredible amount of force once that cools down and, and they equalize with each other. So for every 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you gain a thou, a thousands of an inch per inch of material. Now this is 955 thou. Or, and uh, so we're looking for at least a 200 degree difference. Now it's, 75 degrees or so or 70 degrees in the room right now so that should give me enough for it to just drop on but just in case we got the press here ready and this is a 25 ton press so we'll uh, we'll get the one side pressed up and then we'll flip her around and press the other side in and then the dialing begins um, I did check the center section um for phasing and there's actually a about a two thou difference by the time by the time i pressed it together it was about two thou out of line of that 180 degrees which i'm allowed again i'm allowed half a degree tolerance so whatever that works out to over a three and a half inch three inch diameter uh, circle that it rotates on so I think we'll be good with that tooth out so let's uh, grab those pieces out of the oven hopefully they're warm enough and we'll press them on okay well it's assembled and we're just gonna dial it in now so I got the center section set up it's just on it's one of those without the rollers in it because the rollers made it a little too wide so it's actually sitting on the bearings. See? And we got two dials. Now I checked the side for deflection, make sure it's, it's straight this way on both sides. Uh, this side's bang on. And on the left side, we got uh, about two thou, which I'm not gonna worry about right now because we got other issues. Um, now, I made that 380 thou spacer, and it's 759 thou, which basically both sides press up flush with the pin. Um, so we measure with that, with our digital verns, our calipers. And then the spacer, I knew I'd be within 5 thou anyway, so... Uh, we got a bunch of banging around to do so let's just look at the left side here now we know this is going to run uh, perfectly concentric it's the parts out here where this outside piece can be out of line this way which you're going to see so there's my lowest point zero and then let's just turn it about 180 degrees, so that's 40 thou. So I'll write that on here.
30,000 of each. On this side, let's just roll this back to zero. It's funny how they're, they both zero out in the same spot. So we'll rotate that. And we got just almost 61 thou. So we'll call that 61. So this is my high spot. So what we got to do is basically we got to go half of that because really that's plus 30 this way and if I rotated it the other way it would be plus 30 from that way so it's actually negative 30 so negative 30 plus 30 we got our 61 thou so I know I gotta bang it this way I gotta figure out a way to hold the center section without disturbing it and then uh, with taking a lead hammer or uh, I got a an aluminum chisel. You want a metal that's softer than uh, than steel, the forged steel. So I already put a dent in it, I'm trying to tweak it. When I got another section together, and there's the dent right there. So I'll have to just file that. Um, okay, so let's bang her out, and then once that's straight, we'll get the bearings on. And uh, that'll be it. It'll be ready to assemble. Um, so, but this is going to be the most tedious part, dialing in and now with lots of hammering. So let's uh, let's go on and do that. Okay, so I got her all dialed in. Um, I did note that uh, this was my lead hammer, which uh, really deformed in the process of just hitting edges like this um, so much that it was starting to get close to hitting the other side. Um, so I switched to a copper hammer. Um, this is, uh, it doesn't spark, it doesn't deform, it's softer than steel. So, um, so what I did, because I didn't want to disturb the other halves, I just wanted to pry off um, between the two halves at a time. So what I did, um, you got to hit with a soft, softer than the material, so not steel. Uh, but then I realized I'm on a metal table, so I had to put a uh, piece of aluminum under one side and smack the high side and uh, took me about an hour and 15 minutes to dial this in which for the first time that's I would say that's pretty good um, so on the magneto side we're allowed one thou of travel And it's a little over half a thou. And on the, uh, the other end, we're allowed two thou to travel. And I must have bumped that. So. Just over, well, about a thou. So we're within spec. Uh, I did check the sides here. This is running about two thou. This is running about a thou. I checked it out here too, and it's still, I think I'm a two thou out here. So I'm gonna call it good, and we're gonna throw the outside bearings on, and then we're ready to assemble. 
So here's one tool I had to make. It's a split bearing grabber. It grabs the outside. Now, in the middle section, I accidentally slid on a bearing about 10 thou too far, which caused my al alignment rings to not fall into the slot. So I had to grab it, and you can see there's a, just a little tiny bit of a lip there that grabs the back of the bearing while also clamping on the outside. So there would be a space here as it's clamping because just from my saw width blade. And yeah, a little quick little tool I had to make. <laughs> Yeah. 